evening. You're watching the main news on HK IBC. I'm Cleason. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Former Premier Li Keqiang has died from a heart attack at the age of 68. Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to Washington increases hopes of a meeting between Xi Jinping and Joe Biden. And locally, Chief Executive Zhang Li and Security Chief Chris Tang pledge to explain Article 23. Tributes and messages of condolence have flowed following the death of former Premier Li Keqiang from a heart attack early this morning. His passing shocked millions of Chinese who remembered the 68-year-old former number two leader as the People's Premier. State broadcaster CCTV announced that former Premier Li Keqiang died at 12.10 a.m. after suffering a heart attack a day earlier in Shanghai. All efforts to save him failed. The news took China and the world by surprise, as there had been no indication that 68-year-old Li had any chronic illness. Millions of Chinese went on social media to share their memories of the country's former number two leader. Li, who was born in Anhui province in 1955, was elevated to the powerful Politburo Standing Committee in 2007. Li Keqiang before becoming premier in 2013. He stepped down from the post in March after serving two full five-year terms, during which he pushed for the private economy and foreign investments, as well as structural reforms and opening up. He steered the world's second biggest economy through a difficult period, which included a trade war with the United States and COVID. For many Chinese, Li is remembered as the people's premier for his low-key and pragmatic work style, as well as a down-to-earth approach and a caring personality. Many reflected on his so-called street economy, an initiative to secure a decent livelihood for ordinary people, and his inspections of disaster scenes. Such as the Tianjin explosion in 2015 when 173 people were killed. Li was the first central leader to visit Wuhan in January 2020, after COVID erupted. As premier, Li welcomed Hong Kong chief executives each year to hear the reports on the SER's political and economic development. He witnessed two reshuffles of the SER administration and was briefed by three past and present leaders, Leung Chengying, Carrie Lam and Zhuang Li. Former political heavyweight Tan Yu Chong said he was stunned and saddened by the news of Li's death. In Tokyo, Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno said Li had played a significant role in bilateral relations. While in Washington, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed his condolences. Foreign Minister Wang Yi has called for comprehensive talks with the United States to stabilize relations. Wang is currently in Washington on a visit that is likely to increase the prospects of a meeting between the Chinese and U.S. presidents next month, Sachin Kadvi reports. On his first trip to Washington after being reappointed as foreign minister, Wang Yi was welcomed by his U.S. counterpart, Antony Blinken. The visit is another major step towards improving frosty Sino-U.S. relations and could pave the way for a highly anticipated meeting between President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco next month. So, we have disagreements, we have differences. At the same time, we also share interests and common interests. Not only should we resume dialogue, the dialogue should be in-depth and comprehensive. 
so that with dialogue, we can increase misunderstanding, reduce misunderstanding and misjudgment, constantly seek to expand common ground, and pursue cooperation that will benefit both sides. The Hamas-Israel conflict has added a new dimension to Wang's visit, with Washington wishing that Beijing will use its influence on Iran to prevent a wider war. Wang is expected to meet Biden and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan during his three-day trip. Sachin Kartmi, HKIBC. In Hong Kong, Security Chief Chris Tang was tight-lipped when asked whether there will be enough time for a thorough public consultation on Article 23. But Tang and the chief executive emphasized that the local national security law will be explained fully before it takes effect next year. Macy Mark reports. With the government aiming to introduce Article 23 of the Basic Law next year, Security Chief Chris Tang was asked at a news briefing today whether there will be enough time for a thorough public consultation. But he did not say how long the consultation will last. When asked whether people who oppose the draft of Article 23 would be violating the national security law, Tang said there are different channels for residents to express their views. He stressed that the government will make efforts to explain the local version of the national security law, saying in the past, some people had twisted the government's legislative intent to create social conflict. Legislation on Article 23 was shelved in 2003 following a massive protest. Tang said the new version will be different from that of 20 years ago, as the city has faced different challenges, such as the social unrest in 2019. The government will take reference from Britain's national security law when formulating the draft. Chief Executive John Lee echoed Tang, saying he will explain Article 23, especially to the media and business sectors. In the Let's Talk program on iCable News, Lee said the media showed keen interest in the new law, while the government believes its enactment will benefit the business environment. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The government is looking to Vietnam in its bid to attract more overseas talent. Nepal and Laos are also on Hong Kong's radar in its recruitment campaign. Janice Yeo reports. Labor Minister Chris Sun talked to the airwaves this morning to explain why the government is turning to three Asian countries in its bid to lure talent. He said applicants from Vietnam, Laos and Nepal must have a bachelor's degree to qualify for the quality migrant admission scheme. Vietnam has been successfully developing their country in the past years. They're young, and they're good at information technology. If we open up barriers for them, there are more choices for us than them. On another radio show, Chief Executive John Lee, who expanded the talent drive, said there is stiff competition for skilled people. If the best people don't get on my boat, he will get on the other people's boat. And as we sail, uh, that boat will sail faster than us. So that is why I, I'm very determined to ensure that we remain very competitive by attracting as many talents as possible to Hong Kong. Lee is confident that the measures he outlined in his policy address on Wednesday will appeal to overseas talent. Janice Yu, HKIPC. Marine police have arrested 47 suspected illegal immigrants, more than half of whom had run into trouble at sea. A police launch took 28 South Asians to the Marine South Division in Aberdeen after fishermen spotted them waving for help early this morning at the Wakland Lighthouse. The government flying service deployed helicopters to help in the rescue. Earlier this week, Marine police arrested another 19 South Asian men on the shores of Sai Kung and Lao Fo Shan. It's believed that they had tried to reach Hong Kong via the mainland. All 47 suspects have been charged with illegal entry. A mainland man was arrested on suspicion of abetting their entry. Overseas, the United States says its airstrikes on two Iranian targets in eastern Syria are not linked to the Gaza crisis. But the raids triggered fears of a widening conflict. 
This came as Israeli forces made another grounding foray into the Gaza Strip. Several Hamas targets were reportedly hit, and the Israelis said they suffered no casualties. According to Israel, the deputy head of Hamas intelligence arm was killed. The incursion is seen as a buildup to an all-out land assault on Gaza after Hamas killed 1,400 people in Israel nearly three weeks ago. Israeli airstrikes killed about 7,000 Palestinians. The European Union has added its voice to the calls for a pulse in the hostilities so that Palestinians trapped in Gaza can get emergency supplies. It is very important that we continue to intensify our efforts to deal with the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The aid needs to reach Gaza unhindered and quickly. Over two million Palestinians in besieged Gaza have nowhere to go, nowhere to live as their homes have been bombed into ruins, and little to eat or drink as Israel has blocked supplies. Hospitals are barely able to operate as they run out of fuel to feed their power generators. Aid has entered Gaza from Egypt, but the amount has been described as a tiny drop in the ocean. Hong Kong stocks closed a week with gains as sentiment improved with rising industrial profits on the mainland. A stock buyback by some mainland companies restored investor confidence, triggering a 2.1 percent spike in the Hang Seng Index. Pharmaceutical companies got a booster shot after Japanese investment bank Daiwan gave them positive ratings. Among the biggest gainers were Hanso Pharma, which jumped 11.7 percent, CSPC Pharma surged 10.8 percent, and Sino Biopharm was 9.8 percent higher. SMIC gained 5.8 percent after industry experts said the chipmaker had used technology not sanctioned by Washington to manufacture next-generation processors. And now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed up 354 points. Top 10 equity stocks, Tencent up $5.20. Alibaba up $2.65, and Meituan up $3.20. Tracker Fund up $0.39, cents and BYD Company up $3.40. GD.com up $3.30. Forex trading against Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.24, British pound at 9.47, and Australian dollar at 4.96. Moving on to the UK market, the London FTSE is currently down 17 points. On to the weather now. Cloudy with a few showers tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 24 and 28 degrees. Expect wet and windy conditions over the weekend. That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Clayton. Good night.